order. Now, just before we start, um, Jackie McKinnon did place the daffodils on your desk. Um, April is daffodil month, a time to fight back okay. against cancer and to show your support for those affected by cancer. The city is proud to support the Cancer Society and in doing so to wear a daffodil pin throughout the month of April and celebrate Daffodil Day on Friday, April 27th. To those affected by cancer, the daffodil represents hope for a cancer-free future. The power of the flower lies in its ability not only to inspire hope, but to encourage people to take action. Thanks to Jackie for that commentary. Okay, declarations of conflict of interest. Uh, Mr. Kelly, could I just ask our uh, legal counsel on one issue? Sure, sure, sure. If I or my family own multi-unit apartment complexes in the city, okay, let's say they're in the east side and there's a rezoning in the west side or construction of a new multi-unit uh, apartment complex or rental units, would I be in conflict or is that something you want to? So, I mean, a determination of a conflict of interest and you, is... So, if you would just mind standing up and if there's people on, online as well. Up. Yeah, yeah, or just standing up? Yeah, just come here. Okay. here if you wish. I just want to get a clarification. You want me to wear my mask? No, no. So, a determination of a conflict of interest is always based on a fact, case by case, decision so in your hypothetical scenario with an east uh, and west east and west let's say um, I mean it really would depend on whether the individual has a direct interest in whether or not a rezoning is approved or okay. not okay. so if it's on the west side and the property is owned on the east side of the city then in my view it would not be a conflict of interest okay okay is that is that all right yeah I'm cool. I, I just yeah. thank you did someone go out there what was the end? I don't think you are sure I didn't understand who who was in conflict who was that who was no that? again this come up uh, over the last couple of months about uh, speaking to the issue on, on conflict of interest when it when we talk about uh, multi-unit apartment complexes or rental units, yep. that does it matter where it is in the city? I look at the city as one municipality, so if you own and operate or your family owns and operate, it shouldn't matter where you are if you're, because of, there's a financial uh, return on your investment. But as the legal counsel said, mm -hmm. it does correct? It does matter. It does matter. Got that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I have a conflict of worship. On which which one, sir? Uh, Parks and Recreation Number One. Okay. Um, it's a outdoor multi-sport facility. Okay, sir. Uh, owns a company that's going to build it, or maybe build it. No. So get a conflict. Any other conflicts of interest? <clears throat> okay, that's the only one. Okay, thank you. Approval of the agenda. Oh, moved. Seconded? Yeah. All those in favor, please put up your hand. Councilor Tweed, yay or nay? Councilor Tweed, you're on the line? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, the mayor's asked you yay or nay of the approval of the agenda. I approve. Councilor Yankoff? <coughs> in favor. Okay. So there are three sets of meet. Uh, no, actually, there's more than that. There's a regular monthly meeting, March 15th. <laughs> 2022 special meetings March 10th 28th 31st 2022 and a public planning consultation meeting March 29th 2022 so you want to just take a minute to scan do you want to move them yeah Okay, moved by Councillor Bernard, second by Councillor McKay. Okay, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Okay, Councillor Tweed, yay or nay? In favor. Councillor Yankoff, yay or nay? In favor. Okay, business arising out of the minutes of 
those three bullets that are just above. Okay, business arising. Reports of committees. We have our esteemed manager here, Alex Forbes. Mr. Forbes. Councilor Clark. Thank you very much. Thank you, Worship. The Plan and Heritage Committee uh, did not meet in uh, March of 2022. Therefore, there are no reports. Uh, the Planning Board met on Tuesday, April 5th. Uh, copies of the Planning Board reports and minutes are included in the package. The Heritage Board Committee did not meet in March, uh, therefore no reports. And the Design Review Board met on Thursday, March 17th. Copies of the Design Review Board uh, reports and minutes are included in the package. The Affordable Housing Advisory Committee met on Tuesday, March 15th. A copy of the Affordable Housing minutes uh, and reports are in the package as well. Um, there are four resolutions to be put forward and possible first readings. And if I can answer any questions, I certainly can do my best. Thank you. Any questions, concerns? Okay. I'm going to read the first resolution, Mr. Yeah, sure, Kelly. Sure. Moved by Councilor McLeod, second by Councilor McCabe, that the variance request for the temporary placement of floating structures. Uses on the water lot located at 5 Great George Street, PID 335307, be approved in accordance with the site plan, attachment A, attached letter of intent, attachment B, and the elevation plan, attachment C, as outlined in the planning board report, plan 2022-04, April 6A-1, and subject to the following conditions. One. The operator and the owner adhere to uh, must meet and maintain any and all federal acts, regulations, standards concerning the location and use. Two, must meet and maintain all provincial acts, regulations, and standards concerning the lo location and use. Three, the flotation, flotating docks must be designed by appropriate engineer with appropriate documentation provided to the city and must not exceed low capacity or be altered in any way. Only engineered docks will be permitted for use. Four, confirmation from the fire department that the fire prevention bylaw NFPA-303 NFPA and NFPA-96 required have been satisfied. Five, confirmation from the city's water and sewer department that the uses of the floating development are fully connected to the city water and sewer. And six, a copy of the issuance Oh, sorry, the insurance for the floating and development that precedes third party liability coverage for operators, the owners of the water lot in the city of Shallowtown, and seven, obtain a development permit to ensure compliance with the above noted conditions, Your Worship. Okay. Any questions, Scott? All those in favor, please put up your hand. Councillor Yankov, yay or nay? In, in favor. Councillor Tweel? In favor. And just to note, Councillor Ramsey is out because, Tracy, he is not feeling well at all. Okay. Mr. Cummings? Yes, Your Worship. Moved by Councillor Clouds and by Councillor Cabe that the variance request for the temporary placement of the floating and eating and drinking establishment on the waterfront lot located at 1 Weymouth Street, water lot PID 335430, be approved in accordance with the site plan of attachment A. Attachment letter of the intent, attachment B, and the elevation plan, attachment C, as outlined in the planning board report, P, uh, plan 2022 07 April 6A 2, and subject to the following conditions. The operator owner adhere to the following. Must meet the, uh, sorry, must meet and maintain any and all federal acts, regulations, standards concerning the location in use must meet and maintain all provincial acts, regulations, and standards concerning the location in use. The floating docks must be designed by appropriate engineer with appropriate do uh, documentation provided to the city and must <coughs> not exceed low capacity or to be altered in any way. Uh, only engineer docks will be permitted for use. Confirmation from the fire department that the fire prevention bylaw NFPA 303 and NFPA 96 requirements have all been satisfied and an approved fire safety plan posted on, on, sorry, on site at all times. Five, the confirmation of the city water and sewer department that the uses of the floating development are fully connected to the city sewer and water supply. 
Six, a copy of the uh, insurance for the floating development to provide third party liability coverage for the operators, owners of the water lot and city of Charlottetown. And seven, obtain a development permit to, uh, to ensure compliance with the above known conditions. Sure. Question? Question come. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Councillor Twill, yay or nay? In favor. Councillor Yankov, yay or nay? In favor. Thank you. Want to read the next one, sir? Your Worship, moved by Councillor Clouds and by Councillor McCabe, that the request for non sorry, for a site specific exemption to develop four unit residential apartment building on the property located at 18 Park Street, PID 365-502, be approved subject to the signing of a development agreement, Your Worship. Councillor, do you want to speak to that? Um, yeah, I can just say two words. Uh, yeah, so this development uh, is certainly uh, uh, a good one. Uh, the, the, the neighborhood is very much uh, uh, pleased with, with uh, what's going to happen. And, uh, you know, any time we can get, uh, get a non-conforming use uh, back to what it's supposed to be, uh, uh, that's a good thing. So, so good work on the developer um, and, and, uh, and the residents were all informed uh, lots of time and they had some good questions and, and the developer had answers. And, uh, which is really nice to see, and uh, it created uh, plenty of staff and, and board and council uh, a lot less uh, consultation because of the work that the developer did. So it's good to see that, and uh, and uh, hopefully that will continue with developers. So thank you very much. Uh, that's it for me. Thank you. Question? <laughs> Questions come. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Councillor Twill, yay or nay? In favor. Councillor Yankov. In favor. Thank you. Your Worship, moved by Councilor Cloud, second by Councilor McCabe, that the request to amend Appendix A, future land use map of the official plan from low density residential to medium density residential for a portion of 1B Palmer's Lane, PID 275735, total area of 457 square meters. Two, Appendix G, zoning map of the zoning and development bylaw from a single detached residential, R1S zone, to the medium density residential, R3 R zone, for a portion of 1B Palmer's Lane, PID 275-735, total area of 457 square meters. And three, consolidate a portion of 1B Palmer's Lane, PID 275-735, with one Palmer's Lane, PID 275-313, subject to a final PIN survey plan in order to construct a 12 unit apartment building and be approved, Your Worship. Your Worship, uh, <coughs> comment two. Uh, <coughs> thank you very much, uh, Council and Peter. Uh, I would like to make a motion to uh, defer this one um, um, dur during our planning board. Just one second. Do, do you want to make a motion to defer? Uh, I would like to make a motion to and, and uh, uh, I think I kind of did my homework and I asked. Yeah. I asked uh, Councilor Duran to second it. Oh. Councilor Duran, you yeah, yeah, second it. I appreciate that, though. Um, yeah. But anyway, the reason the reason for the deferral is that uh, during our planning board meeting, um, the one of the properties um, boarding the, the development, uh, both their survey plan and the developer survey plan didn't uh, jive. So uh, the deferral will give uh, the surveyors time to uh, get their uh, plans together. Dr. Ice across your teeth. So. That's the purpose of the early worship, and I believe it's seconded by Councillor Drawn. Thank you. Any comments, C Councillor Drawn? You're. Thank you. I, I, I talked to Councillor uh, uh, McLeod there, and I appreciate your deferral on this. Uh, I've been taking numerous calls, emails, concerned residents, so uh, I'm very happy to, to stand here and, and second that for, for this. So I appreciate that. Thank you. So it's on the floor of the deferral. Questions called? Question called. Questions come. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Councillor Yankoff, yay or nay? I'm, I'm in favor of the deferral. Councillor Twill. In favor of the deferral. Thank you. Anything else, Councillor? That's it for me, sir. Okay, so. There's still another one, Your Worship. For oh, thank you, sir. Just one second. That's a oh, second, first reading? First reading. Yeah. Second. Okay, go ahead, sir. Your Worship, official plan PHOPA.1, uh, zoning and development bylaw PHZD.2, to adopt bylaw PHZD.2059, a bylaw to amend the zoning and development bylaw 
to amend Appendix C, approve site-specific exemptions as per Section 3.11, site-specific exemptions of the Zoning and Development Bylaw to develop a four-unit residential apartment building on the property located at 18 Park Street, PID 365502, subject to the signing of a development agreement. Be it resolved that the said bylaw to amend the City of Shelltown Zoning and Development Bylaw, PH-ZD.2059, as it pertains to 18 Park Street, PID 365502, as attached, be read a first time and be approved, and that it be read a second time at the next public meeting of Council, moved by Council McLeod, second by Council McCabe, Your Worship. Shall it carry? Pass. Pass. Okay. Councilor Tweel, yay or nay? Pass. Councilor Yankoff, yay or nay? In favor. Thank you. That's it, sir. That's it for me. Thank you. Sports. Thank you very much. Thank Good to see you here, sir. Come back anytime. <laughs> okay. Uh, Councillor Yankup, we're going to your report next. Okay, thank you. The um, the uh, Council Advisory Committee met on March 25th. Um, there are um, two resolutions in your package for your consideration. And if you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer. Thank you. Any questions for the chair? No? Mr. Kelly. Your Worship, moved by Councillor Yankoff, second by Councillor Duffy, whereas a motion to re recommend a change to the current Council Advisory Committee membership was presented to uh, at a strategic priorities and intergovernmental cooperation committee on February 24th, 2022. And whereas the recommendations was then reviewed by the Council Advisory Committee monthly meeting on March 25th, 2022. Therefore, be resolved that the Council Advisory Committee recommends that the membership remain status quo until the end of 2018-2022, uh, the City Council term in Russia. Councilor McKay. Thank you, Your Honor. Would you like to speak to the motion? Yeah, I would like to speak to the motion. I was reading this over and I did watch the meeting where the discussion took place and I actually discussed with the chair as well, um, you know, with six months remaining. Just right? please just yeah, no problem. speak as loud as you with can. With six months remaining, approximately seven months remaining in our term, um, I would propose rather than shifting and changing things, uh, an amendment to this resolution that maybe we look at this committee in general and whether we go back and look at our procedural bylaw. I don't think we, I would propose that we abolish this committee moving forward and look at different ways to do the work that's done by this my proposal. Councilor Strong? Thank you. So is that a proposal or a resolution? A resolu I, 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 to amend this uh, resolution, just to abolish this. Mr. Kelly, is that a friendly uh, amendment? I think that would be a whole different motion. This is only to take the recommendation oh, of the okay. committee. If you're going to disband or or that uh, committee, that would involve a whole different process. Councilor, if I'm correct, that would be taking a whole committee structure. So that would be depending upon what the council want to do with that committee if, if it is to disband then we all also have to do amend the bylaw yeah. and find another venue to appoint whether it's done through the mayor's office or as it was before or something else we need to come up with that so that's a whole different yeah, realm okay. no yeah so just for your information mr kelly you know that in summerside the city of summerside the town of cornwall the town of stratford that procedure remained in place for their rules and procedures that it goes through the office of the mayor. And that can still be done, Your Worship, if that's what they want to do, but that wouldn't be different from this motion. Right. This is only a recommendation. Right. If it's council, council's intent to put that back into the office of the mayor, then that's a different process, Your Worship. Okay. Can I at least have it on the floor that that is looked at at some point, somewhere, somehow? Yeah. Okay, I'm, let's do really note that, yeah, Tracy, that could you repeat what you said there, Councillor McKay, to That look. moving forward that this committee is so you want to disband and put and put the appointment back into the mayor's office? Is that what you're asking? That's what I would see as makes the most sense. But if there's other discussions, it should be reviewed by council. Council Drawn, are you sure. supporting yes. what she's saying? Yes, that's what that's what I want. I had so a word in the second that motion. If she was going to so we should do the first one. Sorry, if I could, yeah. Councilor, no, we should yeah. do the first one first. Your worship, take that vote, oh, yeah. 
and then if they intend to disband and put the authority of appointments back into the mayor's office, we then will come forward with a new revised procedural bylaw. Yeah. Yeah. That's what council wants, Richard. Yeah. But that's not the debate right now. The debate right now is uh, is deal with this resolution. Okay. No, that's fine. Council, council, council members. Council manager is not here. Is it, we have a vice chair for this committee. Who's the vice chair? Is this this committee? The vice chair is. He's not. This is council advisor. Oh, you're talking about uh, strategic well, I, priorities. The question I have is, there's nothing on the strategic priorities in going cooperation terms of reference that deals with council as a whole or 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 who is on what committee and so on. So I'm wondering how you're able to put a resolution through a committee. I mean. You might as well be putting put resolutions through public works and everyone else saying, I want this or I want that. I'm just wondering, how is the committee that has nothing to do with terms of reference to put a resolution on the floor? So the, re the reason. Re so the reason why this motion is here tonight is that if you recall that the committee did put it on and it didn't go through the proper process of that. So that their motion or their request was sent to the CAC for discussion. The C, uh, CAC did review their request and are recommending the status quo until the end of this council term and then be up to the new council. So that's a, their recommendation for this one. Going forward on Council McCabe's one, that's a different issue. Yeah. That does fall under Sustrat plan. Their procedure bylaw is within their realm, so that will go back to them to come back with a new report subject to council's direction. So it's not really for strategic priorities. There's a question on the floor that would ask to take back to the committee. They had a Motion brought up council at the strategic, but it didn't it didn't go through the proper committee, the CAC, and that's why it was deferred to them for discussion and now brought back here. Okay. Because that falls under the responsibility for appointments under the current bylaw. Yeah, so was it just it was a request to CAC from from Florida? From the strategic planning, that's correct. I'm the vice chair of that. I was going to just say, Councilor Brown, you were the vice okay, chair. I just wanted to confirm it. At the back I was just going to <laughs> Didn't want to give you that honor unless you uh, were <laughs> So okay. the vice chair is. So Councilor Brown, do you want any words to say with that? No, it came from our committee that, that there was a appetite to see what we could do, make some changes, and you know we put it forward and then it came to council and, and mr kelly said that it wasn't proper the way it was that done so come back to committee and then it's here today um, but it, it, then yeah it, it came back to committee and then it had to go to cac right so then right. it came okay. back so, here so it was a request to cac but okay yeah because yeah. you know i need to start having committees make a recommendation no. and resolutions on other committees that want this or want that but we duly noted what Councilor McCabe has stated. Yes. Correct? And yeah. let's yeah. vote on this first. Yeah. Questions? Okay, questions come? Yeah. Questions come. Okay, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Please keep your hands up. Okay. Okay, Councilor Yanka, yay or nay? In favor. Councilor Tweel, yay or nay? No. Okay. All those against, please raise your hand. Okay. Councilor Tweel, yay or nay? No. Okay. So I take it to five, be a six. Five, five four. Five, five four. Nope. Five four. Thank you, sir. Five four. What way? To maintain the status quo, Councilor. Status quo. So, Councilors, Rivera. Councilor. Jerome. Jerome. Councilor. Sorry, that's Mayor Cody. And Councilor Tweel, your ship. Okay, sir, do you have another resolution then? Yes, Your Worship. Your Worship, uh, moved by Council Yankoff, second by <coughs> Council Duffy, that the resolution dated March 28, 2022, appointing Jennifer Campbell to the Special Events Reserve Surf Committee be rescinded, Your Worship. Okay. Oh. Okay. Councilor Yankoff, did you want to speak to it? Um, sure. The uh, the only thing I could say is, unfortunately, when um, her name was on the original list, and when she was reached out to, it um, it appears she's no longer um, qual uh, qualified to be on this committee due to a change in career. So um, so we have 
so she's no longer able to sit on that committee. So we'll have to go back to the committee and you then report. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Questions, Colin? All those in favor? Please raise your hand. Councilor Yanko, yay or nay? In favor. Councilor Twill, yay or nay? In favor. Just one second, sir. That's it, Councillor Yanko. Thank you kindly. I know it's been a long time for you there. Okay, we're on to the next report. Perks, recreation, leisure, activities, standing committee. Chair, Councillor Bernard. Thank you. Got that all in one sentence. We're to committee on uh, April the 4th, and we'll uh, have it uh, from the minutes of worship. Uh, our parks, recreation, and leisure committee discuss closing the inside lane <coughs> around Victoria Park to vehicle traffic. Uh, the headaches return to active transportation pathway in time for the upcoming long maintaining worship. So uh, there's a resolution of the last left. That's a consideration. And the worship, uh, I'm also very pleased uh, to be able to bring forward on behalf of my committee. A resolution to award construction of the second multi sport outdoor facility within the city. The worship, this will be modeled after the one in Hillsborough Park and will be constructed behind the West Road Community Center. And I guarantee it will be a nice addition to, uh, to the area for a lot of people to enjoy. Councillor Barrett, Councillor Cody, she's very happy with that. Uh, <laughs> and worship, uh, as we are well aware, last month we received a recommendation from the Finance Committee to accept an annual for the new replacement sport facility. This month, Parks, Recreation, and Leisure Committee is recommending to Council the City commits to a memorial wall in the new facility, recognizing the history and the donation of land from the city's family. So basically, you worship. You need to tell the story because a lot of people that come in on that facility and they don't know the story of the city's donation or the land and so on. So, that's one thing. The other, you worship the committee is also recommending the city officially name the arena Simmons Arena and the official name of the pool being Simmons Pool. And that will go along, you worship, with, with the Simmons uh, sports field. So, if you worship with the memorial wall, um, that will ensure that anyone who enters the new facility will certainly know the history of the Simmons and the donation they made and the gratitude for the city. Um, and one other thing, worship, I would mind ask, uh, if I could ask, Chair of Finance, if you take under consideration the, the request that Finance approve the money from the naming rights, that they can look at putting that towards the city's sports subsidies, so we can look at lowering the cost of the sports for the kids within the city of Toronto. So that's something we can do. Appreciate that. Um, the other thing, Worship, is uh, give Council a little bit of an update on, on the uh, replacement project. Um, tender package one, this is the steel building, the pre-engineered steel we talked about where the most of the ladies are in the supply chain. So the tender was posted on April 5th, it's scheduled to close on April 27th, and the tender awards proposed to be for May the 9th. Um, is it estimated right now where it's nine to 12 months delivery period for the pre-engineered steel? Um, the, uh, Geotechnical investigation report. They are drilling the boreholes that taking place this week. We expect to have the report by the end of the month. And the tender package for demolish of the existing pool. Uh, tender is expected to be released by the end of April and to be posted for three weeks. The tender award is proposed to be by the end of May 2022. And the demolishing of the, uh, the, the old pool to commence as soon as possible after that, so early June. So those are the tenders that are on the, in the hopper right now, you worship. We're also working on, obviously, we're working on the Netherlands now, preparing for concrete footing, foundation, steel, and machinery, and mechanical, and electrical. So, 
Does the report, Your Worship, and if I can answer any questions, I will. There's three resolutions for council consideration. Okay. Thank you. I have a question. Go ahead, sir. Uh, Councilor Bernard, I received phone calls and emails regarding the, uh, I guess, the negotiations for uh, for the name for the new Simmons uh, Sports Complex. The residents want to know if you could give me in a chronological order, and I think the process began eight months ago. Who was directly involved with the discussions and the negotiations? to uh, discussions. Who was involved from the elected officials side of things and who was involved from senior administration? Councilor Twill, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Why don't you leave that for the resolution under... No, it's, it's nothing no, to do with the resolution. No, it, it, we'll leave it for that because that deals it's with... It's nothing to do with the resolution, well, Your Worship. Well, yeah, but I'm ruling it out of order, so you can bring it up under that, under that. Uh, You're interfering. Your, your, your worship. Yes. Your worship, if I may, if I may, I, I actually do think that um, he's not out of order because if you wait until the, he reads the resolution, then he only gets two questions, and if the questions are about the resolution, he's just trying to ask the question now. Yeah, and um, he can so ask. That, that's, Mark to Councillor Yankoff, he can ask those two questions under the resolution. No, the, the no. questions I want to ask under the resolution are pertaining to the resolution, Your Worship. What? This is about the process of how, with, with respect to the resolution that was passed yeah. on March the 10th. Yeah. Residents that, want to know yeah. who was involved with the discussions from the inception and how this whole thing evolved. Who's involved in the discussions, yeah, Mr. That, Mayor? It's in the minutes, Your Worship. Yeah, it, that, and it's in, it's in the minutes? Yes. Yeah, so it's in your minutes if you read your package. And that I read the package. It doesn't say who was involved in negotiations. Anyways, I'm going to leave that to the resolution, and that resolution... Yeah, yeah, Mr. Mayor, no, Councilor Tweel. Councilor Tweel. Councilor Tweel, you can ask that question under resolution oh my God. number three. Mr. Mayor, you're interfering no, under no, no, my right as an elected official to ask a question. You will ask the question under resolution number one. Can we put resolution rent number one on the floor? Okay. Uh, I'm going to... Yeah. Resolution number one. And then, Councillor, we just have to take note, Councillor Duran is in conflict, so he's leaving the room. Can you read it up, please? Your Worship, moved by Councillor Bernard, taken by Councillor Deputy Mayor Cody. <coughs> and the recently advertised tender for West Royalty Community Center multi-sport outdoor facility that the City of Shelton accepts a bid of $282,406 plus applicable taxes from Landmark mm -hmm. Construction and that the amount of 2,900 plus applicable taxes from Coles Associates Limited for professional services during the construction be accepted, Your Worship. Councillor, oh, do you want to speak to it first? Uh, then, Councillor, Your Worship, please speak to it first. Last year, we didn't have enough money. We talked to the French government and uh, got in line with uh, some funding here from ACOA. ACOA is part of the project. Uh, we have committed to $100,000 to work this project. So, uh, should recognize them. As a, as a contributor to this project, it's $280,000 and it's going to pay $100,000. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Bernard. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Councilor Bernard, uh, for the report. And um, yes, tremendously happy to see this coming to the board. Um, yeah, a little bit delayed, but, but that's okay. That's uh, good things, uh, good things come to those who wait. <laughs> so the residents will be quite happy. Uh, just a quick question for you, just for clarification, I did. I don't know. <clears throat> what was added and what was removed. But it says here the staff reviewed the bids and were able to remove a couple of unnecessary items. Just just curious where what Frank. those would it be. So uh, you were yield to Frank? Mr. Uh, you worship, yeah, Mr. so Frank, it was the uh, the polyplastic that was going to go under the bottom. We don't need that now because we changed the design feature. We left it in there just to get an idea in okay. case it couldn't afford the others. And then it was the uh, associated uh, uh, caulking that is required for sealing that. And there was a cash allowance we had put in just in case we might have needed it whenever we reviewed the tender in case something was missed, but we didn't do that. So, oh, perfect. Thank you. So, it was a bit of a savings. I asked awesome. the same question there, Councilor Hart. <coughs> What's that? I was asking the same question. Mm -hmm. First, again, I didn't know what was in it, so I didn't know what came out of it. You're getting a box culvert, outdoor venue. It's going to be great there in Ward 7 or Ward. Is it Ward 7? Beach Road won't have any traffic for it. <laughs> 
Okay. Any other questions? Councilman yeah. Chaffee. Yeah. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, just a quick question, Your Worship. Is this is this uh, meeting being carried online tonight? It is. Okay, to the general public. It's live stream. Okay, okay it's live stream, is it? No, I, I wasn't sure whether we were just with uh, our counselors on or whether the general public was involved also. Because what I want to bring up tonight, uh, and I would ask the, the help of uh, Councilor Bernard as the chair of Parks and Recreation, is the fact that uh, we've all seen over the last two or three uh, weeks these large ads in regards to okay, say, just, just again counselor can you oh. need that for resolution three? Oh, sure i thought thank i was out of the resolutions no office. we're in resolution oh, okay. number one on the sure. road call me thank okay, you okay thank you we'll call you out yeah gotcha okay question question questions called good all those in favor please raise your hand counselor uh, yankoff yay or nay in favor. Councilor Tweel, yay or nay? In favor. Okay, 8 zero. Now just one second. So, Councilor. Okay, Councilor Brown, can you back in? Thank you. Okay, sir, want to read the second one? Yes, your ship. Moved by Councilor Bernard, take by Councilor Yankov. Whereas COVID 19 continues to impact our community. And whereas public health officials continue to strongly advocate for social distancing, and whereas public area, including streets, sidewalks, and boardwalks, provide space for physical exercise while adhering to social distancing, therefore be resolved that from April 14th, 2022, to October 31st, 2022, the interior laneway of the Victoria Park roadway be closed to vehicular traffic to allow for the laneway to be used as an active transportation pathway, Your Worship. Questions? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Councilor Tweed, yay or nay? In favor. Councilor Hancock? In favor. And that's an active transportation pathway. Okay. Sure. sure. Moved by Councilor Bernard, second by Councilor Hancock, that the City of Shelltown supports placing a memorial wall display in the new sports center facility, recognizing the history and, dona and donation of the land from the Simmons family and that the city agrees to officially name the new arena, Simmons Arena, and further that the city agrees to officially name the new pool, Simmons Pool. Okay, Council now can Councilor Tweel, or do you want to speak to it first? Yeah, Your Worship, I'm going to move a deferral on this particular resolution so that uh, the community have an opportunity to become involved with this discussion and this debate as to um, how uh, the resolution that was passed on March the 10th, uh, a lot of the members of our community are very upset at the way this whole thing unfolded and how it's transpired. So uh, I think before we take any other steps, I believe we need to do our due diligence and uh, moving a deferral on this resolution. I hope the majority of the council would support the deferral so that we can, uh, as a council, plan a, plan a public consultation process and to have the community involved before we arrive at a, at a final decision. And that could mean uh, the rescinding of the resolution of March 10th. Okay, so moved by Councillor Tweedle with a deferral, seconded by Councillor Rivard. Sure, yeah. Okay. Councillor Rivard. Question, okay, question on the deferral, yeah. please right. stand. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Rivard. So, uh, how, how does this affect the plans moving forward? Will, it, will deferral slow down our process any or with the no. dates that you're set? No. No. Okay. Good. 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 Yeah. Okay. Good. No, just one. Thank you. Councilor Bernard. Thank you, Bruce. Um, it's funny if people don't get their own way out of the like to bring regurgitate the same information they don't know. The fact of the matter is that um, this process was taken to the Parks and Recreation Leisure Committee and it was explained to them, the offer and the years. Parks and Rec and Leisure Committee unanimously supported it and supported the moving on to Finance Committee. The Finance makes the financial decision for the city. When I read from the Minister of Finance, they had talked about it and they had forwarded it on the council. They approved it. So uh, I'm not sure you know, what's done any different than whether the Cody Banks or whether Reese Link or the Bell Alive people. This is not that often that we have these options come to the forefront. 
I mean, when you, you were there when the caring facility when we first yep. got built. Yep. It took 10 years to be able to get someone to step up yep. to the sponsorship. Yep. Each lane took 15 years. And it didn't so, have the, the, the unanimous approval of council either. No. So, um, this, when, when, when this offer was made, um, and it's no different than somebody to the, you know, somebody puts put an offer in the house, you're not going to put solar on until, uh, until the financing is confirmed. And so we waited for the financing to be confirmed and took it to the proper process. So two committees have dealt with it, and two committees have unanimously asked for it to be moved forward to council. The council voted on it last, last month, March it was a 7 to 2 vote. So here's another example of things that would be regurgitated. So uh, anyway, I, I always would be voting against it. Councilor McCabe, and then Councilor Vert, and then Councilor Duran. And this is more, I'm just looking for clarification on the resolutions. When I look at the resolution and it talked about the city agrees to officially name the new arena Simmons Arena, and based on the minutes that we had, it, it said uh, exclusively identified the facility, facility to be contemplated as the EP Murphy Wellness Center. Yeah. So I'm going to look how. So take a, take, a mat, take a look at the Bell Alliance Center. Yeah. Bell Alliance Center, when you go inside, there are two pools, two rinks. One rink is already named, the McLaughlin Arena, and the, they're trying to sell the rights. They have been trying to sell the rights for Arena B and the two pools. So if they were named, you'd come in and you'd see those names. So for, you're going to have one rink, and on the outside it's going to no, be... No, this is not going to be just one rink. This is going to be a, 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 a wellness center with a pool, a rink, a walking track, and a 2,500 square foot multi-purpose room. It's going to be a lot different than the old Simmons. Good? Councilor Verde, then Councilor Duran. Thank you, Worship. Uh, thank you, Councilor uh, Bernard. Um, listen, I, I get, I get, you know, that the finance approved it. I mean, we, we were missing Councilor Cody, and I think uh, the mayor was, uh, you were at the meeting, either, so I had to share the meeting, so we had Councilor Duffy, I believe, who was involved in, in this along the way, and Councilor Ramsey, the new to Park and Rec, so, um, you know, I was chairing the meeting, in all fairness, I, I knew nothing about this until it did, but again, we had, we had two votes of the people who knew what was going on, so um, I think it's a little bit unfair to say that, you know, it was, uh, it was, it was unanimous um, so easily, it's just because it was kind of set up that way. <clears throat> I guess, I guess my issue really is, is around process, and I think I mentioned this last meeting, Councillor Bernard, was that any time that we have discussions with regards to finances in the past, be it the purchase of the parking lot, or the sale of the parking lot in behind Charlottetown Hotel, be it the purchase of the two homes on Mount Edward Road, be it the parkades, any negotiation that involves money. It always came here to a committee that vote. It always came here where council would deliberate talk. We'd always send, give direction to this CAO to negotiate these things. I guess that, that's where I have a little bit of a problem with this, is that, is that you took it upon yourself to have these discussions where I think the proper process That's is not that true. I'm going to stop right there. That's not true. The discussion was with the CAO. The discussion was with the Parks and Rec Manager. Why was this different? Was the so why was this different from any other financial <coughs> discussion that we've had we, in the past we, we, we where it's before. come? No, we, we, but we, it's always come to committee just, the whole. It's yeah. always come to committee the whole for direction, not, not a few or a committee. It's always come to this. We've always had discussion here to say, CAO Peter Kelly, please, Go negotiate a, a price for the two houses on Mount Edward Road, or negotiate a price for the planning office, whatever it may be. And then he would report back to us and say, "Here's the number. Uh, vote." That that didn't happen in this process. So we again, a lot of council didn't know that this was on the table and didn't have a chance to discuss it until last till last second. That that's my concern. Is that it should have it should have came here first. As soon as you knew that this was even an option, it, sh it should have been here discuss with Peter Kelly to do the negotiations. It, it's, it's happened every other way, with every other financial matter. I don't know why it's different. Uh, that's all. Do you want to respond? Yeah, could, could you please, could you just wait for Councilor Council Trump. Can he respond or you want sure, to? Sure, yeah, no, go ready. ahead. Right Councilor Bernard, respond. Yeah. I, I guess, Councilor Bernard, this situation was from the same as, as uh, Cody Banks, same as Chief um, Those, those, the, so unsolicited offers came to us. We took it to the committee, and the committee reviewed it. The committee agreed with it. And the committee moved it on to, as you say, the finance uh, committee. So, if there was any issues or any questions, or you thought it moved too fast, the finance committee should have said, "We're going to break on it." 
Well, but but I was sharing it. Oh, just, but I was sharing it. <laughs> so well, I asked the questions. Share. I asked, but I had to vote. Oh, so well, what did your committee say? We just put it to a vote. They didn't say much. At the time, I was asking a lot of questions, and I said, I'll save it for council meeting. Vote was two to zero. <laughs> yes. Well, according to this, Parks and Rec Committee received a proposal from D.P. Murphy, the naming rights, uh, support center. Uh, it was agreed upon D.P. Murphy would make a payment of 250000 paid over five years. This is your finance minutes. That would be a period of five years, 50000 per year. This would be like, uh, they would like the leasing agreement to be 15 years, and that they'd be given a first option to renew for a further term prior to the expiry of the agreement. That's the question they were asking. You guys could have said yes or no. Committee approved this request and it will be brought to council by resolution. Yeah, but, but so I finance asked committee, it's your, it's your guys' responsibility to make those decisions. We take the information to you. So at the end of the day, if you think the finance dropped the ball, then that's fine. The finance makes the financial decisions to recommend to council. Yes or no, or you know what? You took take it to a committee as a whole. Yeah. Those are financial decisions to be made by the finance committee. Okay. So you know. Yes. Don't blame me. Thank you. I'm, 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 I'm not part of the finance committee. But just, yeah. can I just rebuttal? Yeah, rebuttal. Thank you. The council for argument. Again, it's optics in your, in your, in your play. You're, you're, you're playing with optics, optics because, because Councillor Duffy, who, who I'm told, brought the Simmons proposal or the person that was asking you to you. So, so you knew about this. And, and Councillor Duffy, part of finance, you were aware of this the whole way through. Councillor Ramsey, I'm told, also knew. So, so is he part of the fraction of right So I call them slam dunk votes where there was no discussion. I discussed things. It didn't show in the minute. I had a ton of questions, and then I just said, you know something, <clears throat> I don't have a vote, so I'll just discuss it at council, which I did discuss it at council. Again, asking the same questions I did at the committee. So to sit there and just say that the finance committee approved it, vote, well, great, kind of kind of staged or set up a little bit. It was a little bit of a disadvantage. If Councillor Cody would have been there. Unfortunately, he couldn't be because of his father passing away. Very sorry, Jason, by the way. <coughs> um, then, then I would have had a chance to, to, to vote against it, speak, you know, speak against it, everything else. But I didn't have that chance. I spoke to it, but I didn't have a vote. So again, it's just optics. That Count we had two votes, so it's not really. Yeah. Can, can I just let Count Strong go first? Oh. Count Strong. Sure. Thank you very much, Your Worship. I was a member, or I am a member of the Parks and Recreation Committee, and you know when it, when it's informed us about decisions, like all councillors, it comes and goes very quickly. Uh, this this was a financial decision, the biggest one ever. Uh, it seemed a good business decision until you know you, you get the background information on it. You know, I, I did vote to, to send it to finance and come back to uh, uh, council, and there where I thought we'd have some discussion. Um, having since that time, like, I'm not making excuses for anybody here in council or, or anything, I can only speak for myself. But I grew up in Sherwood. I went to Simmons Arena since I was three or four years old. I went to Simmons Pool. I walk in the door, it's Simmons Arena, Simmons Pool. Never knew a thing about it until it comes to Park and Recreation Committee. I, I had numerous phone calls, numerous emails. And, you know, the, this, this one lady that grew up with the Simmons, uh, she's very well spoken. She called me. We had a long discussion. I said, "Listen, you know the council doesn't know the background history. We, you know, we we think on um, business decisions all the time, but we don't know the background." So she was kind enough to give me two pages of the history of the Simmons family. You know, would would council give me five minutes to to read this? What what she wrote me? It was very enlightening to me that that I I could get a. A form of history, and when I wrote her back, I said, "Look, this this would be a good history to to to, to counsel." So uh, I'm asking to read her her two pages, if that's okay. And, and if we're tight here on time, I could certainly sit down. And I could give you it all written, you know, whatever the council would like. I, I promised her I would try yeah. and try so, to give a history lesson. So, Councillor Don, did she refer to Gordy McCarvel's book on the ginger beer, soda water, and soft drink bottlers? His book. I, I know that Gordy's name or, or his book never came up. This person lived in the area. Um, she, she went to school with these people. Um, you know, she played on the land. And, and she gave me some historical facts that I had no idea. You know, of Kirkwood Drive, about, about the church, about Colonel Gray. You know, I, wow, I, I kind of wish 
that you know maybe we had that all before we made some decisions, and maybe it would have been beneficial to council to have that. You know, I'm not I'm not knocking anybody's decision. We make the decisions all the time, but if we all would have known the history, uh, I, I, you know, Councillor Tweel seemed to know it, but uh, but I didn't. But you know, <coughs> saying today, if you give me five minutes, I could talk about it. If not, is it all right? Go ahead. It's entirely up to yourself. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you very much, Council. Uh, by now you know bits and pieces of the Simmons history of the land donation to the Simmons Sports Center. Before any land donation, the Simmons family probably did not realize how important their donations were going to contribute to the changing evolution of Charlottetown's school system and sporting recreational facilities for the community. They just did it, and that was the right thing to do. The special Simmons Field borders on Upper Spring Park Road, North River Road, and Kirkwood Drive. At that time, the south side of Kirkwood Drive, plus the now called Colonel Gray Drive, were the northern boundaries of out or outer limits of Inner Charlottetown, before the first ever amalgamation with the village of Spring Park. In the early 50s, it was still mostly cow fields, apple orchards, and not many homes were there on all three clay roads. West Kent School by the Government Pond, now where the provincial buildings are on Kent Street, was the fire trap of an old four-story school, grades one to 10. It had to be replaced. The Simmons family donated the land to the city and the Charlottetown School Board to build Queen Charlotte High School, grades seven to 10, which opened in 1954. It included a softball field directly behind the school and a soccer field. Later, the new West Kent Elementary School was built on Viceroy Avenue. Later in the 60s, the province, under Summerside's Premier Alex Campbell, combined all of the Charlottetown's Roman Catholic and Protestant schools together as the two hospitals. This was a massive undertaking with major changes. Again, land from that field was donated by the Simmons family to the city, hence the building of Colonel Gray Senior High School, grades 10 to 12, which I went to. To further accommodate students from the renamed Queen Charlotte Intermediate High School, now grades seven to nine, and Birchwood High School, grades seven to nine. To complete this major educational turnover was the importance of obtaining this Simmons land for Colonel Gray High to take over the teaching of Prince of Wales College, grade 11 and 12. As Prince of Wales College was going to be no longer. Prince of Wales College one and two university years joined St. Dunstan's University and became UPI. The Simmons family donated this land for Colonel Gray High for the benefit of the future Charlottetown's children's education. Prince of Wales College building and land became Holland College. To complete the history, the Protestant PEI Hospital in Victoria Park and the Roman Catholic Charlottetown Hospital on Havlin Street became the QEH Hospital. <laughs> As part of Campbell's plan, this had to be one of the biggest turmoils in Charlottetown's history, but the city ended up better for it. Think of it. Frank and Ethel Simmons, brother and sister, last of their family's linkage, had no children of their own. Their farmhouse was on the field next to screaming children having a wonderful time playing soccer. This was Frank and Ethel Simmons' only gratification and enjoyment. Then City Council in the 70s decided to build a rink and pool. City Council was so fortunate that there was still some space in the Simmons field. Frank and Ethel Simmons gave the land to the city free of charge. None of this Simmons family ever asked for anything for all the previous land donations from City Council and neither, <coughs> neither did Frank and Ethel Simmons. What generous gifts to our city. A naming contest with people stating their wishes that the Simmons definitely deserved this honor, City Council agreed the Simmons Sports Center was named. Well, we have two paragraphs left. Okay. It, is job there, <laughs> it is understandable that when this July 2021 large financial offer of, of uh, money came to the city for the renaming of the rebuilding of the Simmons Sports Center, it appeared to be a tremendous windfall and gift, but most city councilors, including myself, did not have any idea of the importance of the history of all the Simmons property donated to the community, as well as of the rink and the pool. At the beginning, 
or at the March 10 vote on the resolution. Many councillors have since had phone calls, emails, etc., from the constituents letting the councillors know how much they value the Simmons history, which I received many. Today, over 2,000 residents have signed an online petition in four weeks to let City Council know that they would wish to total honor the Simmons family to have the naming to go to the new building as the Simmons Sports Center. Home. With all this in mind, it is asked if City Council could reconsider rescinding the resolution of March 10th and the future building permanently called the Simmons Sports Center. And I, and I want to, you know, I promised this lady I'd do my best and I just want to thank everyone here for giving me the opportunity. I know we vote when we're most informed and this was just part of it. So I, I appreciate it and thank you very much. Thank you, Councilor Tron. Thank you for that background. Councilor, Councilor Bernardi. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, uh, Councilor Tron. Um, and I can say the same thing as, as you. I grew up in Sherwood also. I uh, coached for 10 years at the Simmons Rink. Uh, President Sherwood and I hockey for two years, based out of Simmons Rink. Uh, like you, uh, nobody's ever <coughs> talked about the name. Nobody, nobody ever cured where it came from. I think that's one of the reasons why we're saying we should do a memorial wall do a history of it. And a lot of what you just read should be in that history. So this new facility, every time somebody walks in, when they see Sims Arena or see the Sims Pool or you know the Sims Sports Fields, they'll also get the history and know how important that is. Um, then when Mr. Murphy came to us, what Mr. Murphy was talking about was he grew up in the area also. His kids play here and so on. He just wanted to give back to the community. So his offer was what you might see. There's a lot of negotiation. No, it's $250,000, 15 years. I'd like to make that. And here's what he'd like to name the building. So, I mean, it was a question, yes or no. As you know, we discussed it in our parks and rec committee, uh, and then it moved on to finance. So um, I'm not sure what else I could say. And that's, that's one of the reasons we kind of looked because it said there's, there's a lot of people out there that know the history better than us. Simmons Ring is 50 years old. Um, so to me, when you learn about the, uh, about the gift and the donation, I mean, obviously, uh, and that's what we're hoping for any notoriety, right? And they gave away land for school, for the church, so on. So uh, this, this was a nice gesture. But to know how many people don't even realize who, the, who they were, who gave, who gave, who gave them it. So I think that, that's why we're recommending <coughs> doing what we're doing in the resolution by doing a, not only a memorial plaque, but building up a memorial wall talking about the history and what they've done and thank you for what they've done for the city of Charlotte. And then we would officially name the, 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 the Simmons Arena as Simmons Arena and pool as Simmons Pool to go with the Simmons uh, Spark Cup. So, um, anyway, Your Worship, there's not much more I can add. Okay. Councillor, I know Councillor yeah. Duffy, you did get up uh, under the previous resolution. Do you want to get up again? Or do you want to get up and speak to this? Oh, well, uh, I, <coughs> your worship. Uh, I, I follow, I, I, I'm the councillor for the area where uh, the new Marine Corps <coughs> swimming pool is going. Uh, I, 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 I bow to the Parks and Recreation Leisure Committee. Uh, I don't get involved in any ideas or anything that's passed to me. I pass on to the chair or the members of the committee or the staff, the Parks and Recreation staff. Uh, but because I, do, I consider this to be a project for the city of Charlottetown, not particularly for Brighton Ward 3, but for the whole city. So, and we, utilize, we work on the committee system here and we respect the committee system and they're the people in charge and they're, they're doing a great job. What I wanted also to, to talk a little bit about is that I, like the, the lady that uh, uh, Councillor Drong was, was uh, reading from there, I moved into the area in 1955 with my family. So that's 67 years I spent in the area. I was there when the, where the Colonel Gray High School is and where uh, Spring Park United Church is, uh, were, were hay fields. Uh, um, it was a year after uh, Queen Charlotte was built, so Queen Charlotte was a brand new high school there, and it was just farm community. Uh, in 1972, on my first year in university, I had as a wintertime job, not a summer job, as the 
uh, coordinator for the minor hockey system here in Charlottetown. And basically the job was to be a, a liaison person between City Hall, working for the late Charlie Ryan, who was the Parks and Recreation Director, being, working for him and the various presidents over the years, the next four years, uh, with the minor hockey system and doing all the administrative work that, that's required. Uh, and the reason I want to speak just to one issue tonight, I, I've left everything else to Councilor Bernard as the chair of Parks and Recreation. I've seen these one-page ads in the paper, uh, the big spreads, with the headline, uh, uh, Saving, Simmons, Saving Simmons, Simmons Rink Again, and it's the word again that I'm not happy with. When you use the word again, that assumes or inf infers that you did it once before, and this group did not do it once before. Uh, we did it as a city council, we did it as a Parks and Recreation Committee, we did it with the, the work of the staff, and I will ask Councilor Bernard to explain to the general public, I don't want the general public left with the idea that this saved Simmons Rink again. People were the ones that moved it from the Bell Alliance Center back into North River Road. So could you just address that, uh, Councilor Bernard, that, that the cost that would have uh, we would have incurred if we had have stayed the course and built this new facility at the Bell Alliance Center. What was entailed there? Uh, and the fact that we were the ones that moved it back to Simmons, not the Save Simmons Ring. Thank you. So you mean like, like the first plan, we're going to add, we're yes. going to add the 37 to the 15 with Bell Alliance. At the Bell Alliance. And what happened that caused us, us, to, to change course, literally change course, and bring it back to Simmons, the Simmons okay. area where it is. There was a, so the, the was a, there was always a design for the third facility at the care facility, and that, that design has been out there for a few years. Um, after our consultant had, had we met with the consultant and went through his report, the recommendation was to build the third facility out to, uh, um, once they started to investigate that, they realized that underground, so the parking lot would have been tore up and the ring road would have been tore up because that was the main wiring for the university and the water and sewer and so on. So they would have had to tear up the ring road, they would have had to tear up the parking lot. And that, if memory serves you right, it was, it was over a million dollars. No, it was it close higher to than that, dollars. close to seven million. Was that much? Yeah. Anyway, so so at that point, we went into plan B and that was to to uh, replace the things on, on the property. You know, beside it, there's no way there. And that was the resolution by council. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Worship, could I just add one more remark? We've, we've talked and discussed and negotiated over this naming sort of thing. I think, I think that the Parks and Recreation and Leisure Committee have come to a compromise where the Simmons people are going to be recognized in the buildings. Uh, Mr. Murphy is going to be recognized outside the building. Uh, but the most important thing, we're, we're getting a facility here that's far better than this facility we have now. We're getting uh, a, a, you know, an NHL size rink, we're getting a walking track or, around it, we're getting community uh, rooms in it for our classes, we're getting all of these sorts of things, plus a brand new pool for a, about a $24 million dollar 25, price, and tw 25 and a half now price tag. Why don't we just move forward and and and, and thank the good Lord above that uh, we have we have this new building coming. Thank you, Your Worship. Councilor McCann, can I just go to Councilor Twilio, Councilor? Oh yeah, uh, because Councilor Yankov. Yes. Did you want anything to say, or Councilor Twilio? I know you're not no. in the rooms, so not seen. I forget that you're part of the meeting. So, uh, either okay. one. On, on the deferral. <laughs> Councilor Lander, did you want to go? So I, I'll just point out that deferral is successful. I should just remind everyone that um, there was a policy in place in 2006 um, to, um, to ensure that 1% of, uh, of any kind of cost of appropriate city or capital projects um, is um, put back into the project for the creation and installation of public public art. So if we are, um, if this is deferrable, so we want to make sure that we pay close attention to that um, as well. Thank you. Councilor Twill. Well, I, I think where 
where we have to keep our focus is, you know, it's great to say that, well, you know, Parks and Recreation met and then it went to finance. Uh, finance, I believe, met a half an hour before council rendered its decision. And let's keep in mind that there was no historical background in the package. So council could take the time to read the information. Uh, I have an appreciation for the history of, uh, of the city, of this particular uh, part of the city, and the contribution, the generosity of, of Simmons family. None of that was in the package. In fact, the resolution wasn't even in the package for March 10th. So uh, I, I don't know why why all, all these, uh, these prerequisites were, were, were not executed so that council could become much better aware and have a, a, a real good discussion uh, when, when, you know, when the resolution did come forward on March 10th. And, and since that's happened, as was pointed out by Council Garon, there's a petition now with uh, uh, two, was it? Uh, uh, 1900. No, it's more than that. It's 2,065 names on, on a signature. There's, there's comments. There's uh, emails, phone calls being made throughout the city of Shelltown. And with all due respect, the people want the Simmons name on the brand new $26 million facility to be the Simmons name and the Simmons name only. So that's why I moved the deferral. I think it's important we put the brakes on and we need to go back to the community. The community wants to be involved. They want to know, from a chronological perspective, how did these events unfold? Who was involved at the beginning, eight months ago? Who was involved? From the elected officials to, to, to senior administration? Can we get a copy of the minutes? Can we get that information? Um, you know, why, why were some counselors involved and, and knew about this over an eight month period? And, some of us were just informed at the last minute and you know we had to have a special meeting because a member of council talked to the uh, you know Dave Stewart of the Guardian and he seemed to know and it was a rush job and I don't know why I really don't understand that so that's why that's my motivation for moving the deferral I think we need to put the brakes on we need to talk to the Simmons family uh, and we, we need to talk to the community. Equally important, we need to talk to the community, and, and then we'll be much more positioned to make an informed decision as to where we want to go. Uh, a, whether we want to rescind the resolution of March 10th. B, uh, the type of uh, the type of recognition uh, that that we want to uh, that we want to. Uh, the illustrative of the Simmons family and, and, and what the community wants. The, what the community wants is what we want. We represent the community. We can't be making decisions and having decisions just come from the top down. The best decisions are the decisions that come from the bottom up, and that's from the community. So, Your Worship, uh, thank you. I'll call the question. No, uh, no, 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 to, uh, to your, for you and Councillor Yankoff to speak, so I'm gonna allow him to close it up and then questions yeah, called. Just being real quick. Thank you very much, uh, Your Worship. Uh, so for me, uh, um, I'm having trouble. Um, uh, I, grew up, I grew up in the same area, um, played hockey at Simmons, uh, started when I was five, I guess, and I lived on the avenue, just not too far from Council Trail, and uh, I hiked her back and forth with hockey gear and all, so, um, very familiar with, with Simmons and, and what it did for the community, and, and uh, I do apologize to the Simmons family that that uh, um, we seem to miss the boat a little bit on, on getting the, the communication piece out. Um, but my main concern is is for someone to come around the corner and give us some money. Uh, that doesn't happen every day. Uh, um, you know, I think of the pool, not so much the rink, but the pool. Um, as Councilor Drill. You know, uh, stood up for for a lot of years, and that is, we got to keep the price down. Um, um, you know, we don't want to be another carry pool where it costs you seventeen dollars to go to the pool, right? Um, 
and, and the daycares and, and the people that come to visit Simmons from all over, just not Charlotte. But, you know, and it's an affordable way to, to have a swim um, and you book it, you know. So I hate to see us lose that money. Um, I mean, $25 million um, is a lot of money. Um, and what most of the signatures on that, on that petition doesn't understand is that as a council here, we've just been, you know, we just gave orders to give extra money to, to, to both East Link, we gave money to Cary, we gave money to the Islanders, so, you know, I mean, it costs money to operate these places. And uh, for a chance here to get money in our pocket to help out with, to keep the cost of things down for kids, um, it's hard to, hard to look the other way. And, and I'm sure, you know, if we can consult with the, with the family, I think that would, would be a big plus. I don't think that's been done. Um, but, but I think moving forward, I think we all have to realize that this is for the kids, okay? And, you know, people got hurt, they're, you know, I understand, but at the end of the day, why are we doing this? And it's for the kids, and it's for the community, you know, community room. And don't forget, the rink will become uh, tennis courts, squash courts, uh, whatever it's going to become summertime. So this, this is a new facility. This is going, it's like you say, it is a wellness center that's going to be used by various groups of people throughout the whole year. So let's just keep that in mind at the same time while we're thinking of this process. Thank you very much. Okay, questions being called. Okay. All those in favor, please raise your hand in the for the deferral. Okay. Councillor uh, Yankop, yay or nay? All in favor of the deferral. Councillor Tweel? In favor. Those against the deferral? Six to three, deferral carries. So, Mr. Kelly, um, I think we have to look at well, the process. Now, just one second. Vote, no, no. Six three to go with the deferral. Thank so, you. Councillor Tweel, uh, Councillor Tweel's motion is a deferral, so. We have to look at a way of how we engage the <coughs> participation from the community going forward. And so I think that's something the Parks Recreation Leisure Committee will look at or what's the course yeah. of action. Well, and we'll take it back to, to the committee, Your Worship. Back to Parks Recreation Leisure? Yes, Your Worship. Okay. So I just want to... Why don't you just take it back to the committee hall? And it's the committee hall. You mean the yeah. council? Yeah. So we have a meeting coming on the, up on the, the last Monday of this month. So it'll be on the agenda. Okay, so deferral. Just one second. Opposed. Councillors. So can you put that on the agenda? Council Ramsey absent. Okay, is that the last resolution? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Frank, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, we're on to Water and wastewater? Water and sewer, yes. Our day of committee. Well, you're doing a good job there, oh. Councilor Duran. Smells <laughs> uh, <laughs> very pretty. Water and sewer utility committee had a special meeting of council on Wednesday, March the 30th, uh, virtually. Uh, we discussed our, unfortunately, our, our increased rates and then we're trying to hold the line on, on costs and, uh, you know, we did our best, that's, that's all I can say. Um, E-billing is now at 1,536 uh, people that had signed up for their e-billing. Uh, it's a huge savings to the uh, utility. Um, you know, like I said, we're doing our best. Any, any questions that uh, anyone has regarding the water sewer, I'll try to answer them as best I can. Thank you. And with no resolutions. No resolutions coming forward. Any okay. questions for Councilor Duran? Okay, thank you, Councilor Duran. Thank you kindly. Councilor McLeod, Public Works, Communication. Thank you very much, Your Worship. Uh, Public Works and Urban Communication Committee met on March the 30th, sorry, uh, with the draft minutes included. Uh, the Civic Board of Persons with Disabilities did not meet since our last meeting. And there are four resolutions for everyone's participation, and I'll try to answer any questions you would have. 
That's it, Your Worship. Any questions for the Chair of Public Relations? Yes, I do. Yeah, just one second. We get Councilor Bernard and then Councilor Twiggum. Thank you, Your Worship. I'm um, just wondering, uh, Councilor McLeod, Hillsborough Community Center, there's money in the budget for an elevator. Yeah. But when I look, it's only like $95,000. Is the elevator going in this year? The elevator is usually around half a million dollars. Um, the work you got to work up the building and so on. Yeah. Uh, um, what I will do there, I'll probably if Scott Adams is on the on the line. Is Mr. Adams on the line, there, Mr. Kelly? Officially, your yes. Do there is Scott Adams, Mr. Adams, manager. Of public yes, Works. There. So He's there. I'll consider okay. this to be an operational ask. So uh, if you want to go ahead, Scott, Actually, and answer it's the capital. council yes, sir. when it's going to be done. Certainly. So. Uh, you know, your worship. So yes, so the goal is right now we're trying to procure a architecture firm to help us do the line work with that and it's uh, proven to be a little challenging but I think we have found um, that an option that uh, we'll be looking at uh, I think our recommendation at future council meeting uh, but once that design is done and carried out uh, we hope to have some of the work done this year we, we hope to have it all done this year but uh, just looking at timelines there's a chance that it might have to carry over into next year uh, but uh, we will we'll, we'll get to that point when we uh, you know uh, better cost, uh, we we'll have a better idea of the cost and, and work involved for this project. So, is that his dog? Or maybe you. Uh, so if, if I, if I yeah, you, you want to follow up? Yeah. If I, can you hear me, Scott? Scott, you're still there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. So is, is the money in the budget, the 95000 or 90000 is that enough to, to do the design and put the elevator in? Uh, as of right now, again, we, we're still trying to get all that pricing with the design, trying to figure out what that's going to cost us. Um, and then uh, we'll have a better idea come next month. Uh, we'll, okay, okay, thank uh, you. How much money will we get? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Councillor Councillor Tweel is is uh, going to ask you a question there, Councillor McLeod. Yeah. Councillor Tweel. Okay, thank you. Um, it's regarding the Fitzroy Parkade and the facade. Um, the staff are working with the Sheraldine Area Development Corporation, Coles Associates, uh, to prepare tender. Um, what I'm looking for, just that's my first question. Can you give me a cost estimate of what that's going to cost the taxpayers? Uh, thank you very much for your question, Council Trill. Uh I do not have that, but Scott Adams, if you do, or Mr. Kelly might be able to provide that, uh, Council Trill. So in the budget, Council Trill, if you recall, I think there's $450,000 for that right now. It is in Coles getting its design and ready to go to tender. So we're going to spend close to half a million dollars on, on the facade of the... Uh, Exterior of the building on, 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 uh, for the Fitzroy Parquet, that's an awful lot of money. Is, is there any other options or any other methodologies that we could uh, incorporate as opposed, to, as opposed to spending a half a million dollars on a facade for the uh, parking garage? So it Kelly, did, did go through the design review committee, Your Worship. If yeah, you recall, that's what I was going to say. They and, and did recommend this, this a design. It did come back to council as part of the budgetary de uh, deliberations and you've been at it for the last year two years <laughs> so, done. so again uh, council approved it um, we are waiting for the final tender documents once we have the final price council will come back here and council can make that final decision okay okay thank you my, my second question is uh, since things are starting <laughs> to uh, get cleaned up as far as uh, you know the streets uh, can you tell me when the mechanical sweeper is going to be on the streets? And as a, as a follow up, uh, a lot of uh, residents I've talked to are wondering about when when the uh, paint crew will be able to paint the lines, crosswalks, especially with regards to our city schools and neighborhoods where the schools are. Uh, thank you very much again, Councilor Trudeau, for your question. Uh, I believe the, the painting probably process won't start until they do finish uh, the, the debris. Um, if you notice in the minutes, we did talk uh, uh, a lot about uh, this winter. For some reason, we've been seeing more debris uh, around everywhere. after the winter. Everywhere. everywhere. And uh, staff are, are presently on it. But I will yield to uh, Mr. Adams to give you a, a definite answer as to when the mechanical sweepers will be out. 
Uh, go ahead, Scott. Thank you, Your Worship. So, uh, yes, the mechanical supervision rate, uh, as of right now, I, I have been walking, they've been brought in to uh, de-winterize, uh, so they're getting ready for the upcoming season. Um, so it, it just depends on those inspections, if there's any major repairs or not. So we, we'd expect, I'd expect we see one, if not both, by the end of this month. The end of this month? That's correct. Okay, and again, I want to go back to the crosswalks. Uh, can you give me a time frame, timeline when we can see that? Again, we likely see a, a crew, uh, one crew, I believe, started back this week, getting the equipment uh, ready, getting all the supplies uh, in order, um, and I believe you'll start to see them make their way out within the next two weeks. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, Councilor McCabe, Councilor Rivard first, and then you. Okay. Councilor Rivard. Your Worship, thank you. Yes, um, sir. Just on the topic of the parkade, I, yeah. I mean, I haven't paid attention to the to the, uh, to the parkade since I was uh, since I left chair of planning, and I know that was on our agenda at the time. <clears throat> and uh, a little late to the party now, and like I'm walking into a party at 4 a.m. and everyone's sleeping. But is there is the opportunity? I mean, maybe to save five hundred thousand dollars. I mean, we have the arts community that are looking for potentially, you know, finding walls to do murals and things of that nature. You know, it, is there an appetite that maybe? A nice, you know, mural or something um, on on the three stages. It's not a safety issue. It may be something that's kind of decorative and nice for Ken Street. Um, we talk about the lights put on there. Maybe something festive there, um, as opposed to spending. Uh, just I know I'm late to the party. Sorry. So just an idea. Yeah. So, so do you want to speak to it first, uh, I guess Councilor? Sorry, it's, a, it's a it's a great question, and uh, and I guess the best thing we do at this point would be to take it back in the committee. Um, and uh, check it with design review but and make sure we're not crossing any lines yeah. here. Uh, and, Mr. And Kelly and says thank you. The caution on. we've already uh, are in the final process. It did go through design review. Yeah. It is not just a paint c covering, it is actual facade reconstruction. Glass being attached to the building yeah. uh, and with the lights coming yeah. through. So it's more detailed than just uh, a, um, an, an, an artistic rendering on the building, although that's part of it. Councillor, uh, I don't know. If, uh, again, we will take council's direction. Right now, it's in the final design stage for tender document, and yeah. they'll come back to here. And Mr. Kelly, uh, you're quite aware of some of the tweets that have been put on Twitter about we're telling, advising developers to follow the design review, and then they have to put the money into that to to abide by the design review decisions. So. You know, if we're going to practice, you know, we better practice what we preach. And I think that's what's happening up on this roof, is that if we're going to sell ourselves as a historic city, then we, we will have to spend the money. Councilor Rivera. Yeah, thank you, Richard. Thank you. Just follow up. And then I don't disagree that we have to practice what we preach, but let's, let's, let's get things straight. Arcade is not our story. And, uh, and again, the, I guess the question I would take back is, is there any way that we can lessen the cost, and this is just to take back the committee, lessen the cost of what we need to put on the the facade and then allowing for a, a mural or something. Maybe there's money saving. I know there's work that has to be done there and I can appreciate that. I'm just saying <clears throat> to the extent maybe this is an option to take back, save a little money, maybe we can add a sidewalk here there, maybe we can put some more money towards something else in the city because again Kent Street's going through the trans uh, the transformation of maybe having the lights <clears throat> the parkades there. Just don't get out there. Again, 4, 4 a.m. Councilor McLeod to the party. There's no harm in taking it back to the committee, yeah. and uh, um, I'll ask Mr. Adam to a way to uh, uh, talk with the design review and, and uh, we'll examine that. Maybe there is something we could do yeah. for the arts down there. And you're not going to that 4 a.m. party. We'll the planning department, too. And the planning department. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. Just yeah. No Councilor McCabe. Yeah. Your Worship. Just, just one second, Councilor McCabe. First, she's been waiting. I can okay. see her. That was my question. Hey. Actually, I was kind of piggybacking off you, and I don't know when we talked about the facade that was going on, because I was part of the design review. But, you know, is it being classified as art? Because if it's art, then we'll go back to the Arts Advisory Board, too, and make sure that that clicks in. And I, mm -hmm. I like that idea. Okay. Councilor Yankoff. Um, yeah, thank you. Just a reminder, if we're, um, if we're going to be doing any type of um, artistic facade, it has to go through Arts Advisory Board. So just a kind of just a reminder, any kind of public art at all needs to go through that. Uh, that, to that lens. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and uh, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, 
um, catching up with the, uh, the process of the design review and the, and the tendering uh, will have to be done first, but yes, for sure, if, if we can get down that road, then the Arts Advisor will certainly be part of the, the picture. It'll look you. beautiful when it's yeah. done. Thank you. Do you have some res resolutions here, Mr. Trent, uh, Mr. Kelly? Yes, sir, sir. Do you have another question? Or? Yes, go right ahead. <laughs> Might as well. Just we had uh, Councilor Duran doing a read aloud. Comment? Councilor Duran doing a read aloud. Now, what do you want to say? What do you read? <laughs> I just want to question the sweep a minute. When it does go out, they still do the bike lanes first? Yeah. I believe they do, yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of yeah. That's kind of a, the, yeah. Yeah. the bikers do have a tendency to get out before the walkers uh, and uh, and uh, between pothole and manhole covers and yeah. the results we try to get them all straight. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Your Worship, moved by Councillor Cloud, a second by Councillor Duffy, <laughs> that as per the conditions of the request for proposals on engineering services, one sidewalk and multi purpose paved pathways, the submission of WSP in the amount of 49300 plus all public taxes be accepted, and that this work be carried out in the 2022 2023 Public Works Capital Budget Program, Your Worship. Okay. Questions come up. Yes, go right ahead. Is this. What what street is it? Is it there? It's on the Wedgewood. Attach worship. It's on the attached worship. Okay, You're open it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I'm looking at a couple here. There's five of them there. Yeah. Um, Wedgewood Avenue. Thank you for your <clears throat> report, uh, Councilman Cloud. And uh, what, what I'm asking here is, on another note, we were, we were all the council was given an email uh, by one of the residents of, of my ward and. You know, he, he just brought it up to me again, and I went through all my paperwork and I come up with this. Like his email to us is, uh, we are older residents like ourselves, have spoken to every candidate for council and mayor since amalgamation, 1995, during municipal election campaigns with regard to joining K Drive and Parking Drive with a sidewalk. Uh, we have no sidewalk. And I know we went out, this, this is dated July 2018 for engineering services, uh, for 2019 and it says here um, the sidewalk from McKay Drive to Parkview Drive so we went out for engineering services but that seemed to get lost and you know when we go to a five-year plan there that we, we seem to get into it you know it, it comes up well they're not in the five-year plan um, so how do you go back to these people and, and say okay I've tried my best we got it here we, we got some engineering stuff out but now we're not going to have it. Like, what, what can we do? You know, as I see five roads here, are they on the five-year plan? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, what, what am I supposed to yeah. say back to, to Mr. Brown? Right. You know? okay. So if I may, if I may, my question sure. comes along. I will yield again to Mr. Adams. Uh, uh, I believe, Scott, you have something to add to that. Yes, thank you, Your, your Worship. So I guess with five-year plan, it was identifying uh, some of the key priority areas in the city. Um, uh, again, it, it is, as, we, as has always been said, it is a, a moving document. So if we want to, uh, you know, as, as the years go on, uh, add it or, or look at trying to fit it in, um, it is definitely something that uh, we can look at as, as we move forward with the uh, five-year plan. Councilor Duran. Thank you for that, uh, Mr. Adams and, and Councilman McLeod. I'm just wondering, like, uh, since this went out, do we still have the document, the engineering? See, McKay Drive and Parkview Drive, they have sidewalks up, up both sides of the community in Parkdale. Yeah. And then they come up to Elizabeth Street and then there's no sidewalks. Right. So they're walking on the street, it's a, it's a close street. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the, the, the older residents that, that are writing me here, you know, we were happy to say we had the engineering work done and then it's it's a change. So could we go back and revisit that? Would, would you have that on file, the engineering plans? Or, you know? um, I'll, I'll speak on that one. Uh, we will go back, uh, Scott, and, and look at that as to where the engineering, uh, what, where that is and just uh, where does it fall in, in the, the, the overall plan. Um, it, it, um, I know we sent out uh, uh, people to look at the, the needs. Um, but maybe this one might have been missed, so can we uh, take this back and we'll look at it at our next meeting? You okay with that, Mr. Adams? 
Yes, yes, I, I'm okay with that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Again, Cal Strong, what streets? Is it Elizabeth Street that you're looking at? Yeah, asking? that's the top of McKay and yeah, Parkview, right? Yeah. So they have sidewalks and oh. everything up McKay, or Parkview and McKay, and then they come up to Elizabeth Street. And there's nothing there. And there's nothing there. So, so, so look at two are, sidewalks or just a one just, half? Just the one sidewalk. We're, we're not. We're not being greedy here. We're not like a lot of places in Charlottetown. You know, we just want the one, right? But it'll be an act, act of transportation. Well, that'll be awesome. Thank you. Yeah, Thank it. you. And uh, I guess so, where are you with High Street? Is that the next one? That's yes. After, that's uh, after Elizabeth. Yes, that's that's before Elizabeth. That's, they don't have one there. Either. No, they don't have a meeting. And that would require ditch Yes. Uh, yeah, I think it does. Yeah, okay. Same with Christie. Is Christie up there too? I think uh, most of them streets are still that way. Yeah, yeah, it's up there. Yeah. Okay. Thank Thank you. Keep it going. Good. Keep Good. it going. Good. Yeah. Okay. I think you're getting the uh, body language to get up there and read that, Mr. Kelly. Oh, okay. Okay. It was your. Oh, we took us off course here. All those in favor, please raise your hand. <laughs> Councilor Yankov, yay or nay? In favor. Councilor Twill? In favor. Okay. I'm going to read the next one. Your Worship, Mover Councilor McLeod, Chairman Councilor Duffy, that as per the conditions of the request for quotation for two new municipal sidewalk tractors, an attachment to submission of Saunders Equipment Limited in the amount of $411,831.10 plus all public taxes be accepted, and that this work be carried out in the 2022 2023 Public Works Capital Budget Program, Your Worship. Questions called. Oh, question, sir. Go ahead. Go ahead, Deputy. Thank you, Richard. This Thanks, Councillor. So I'm just noticing here, we're not going with a low bid. I know they didn't score as high in the specifications, but, you know, thank my forgiveness here. We're talking about sidewalk tractors. I'm not sure how specific they have to be for the sake of spending an extra $40,000 on, on the two machines. So I'm just curious on, you know, when we sitting here all night talking about money. Yeah. I'm just wondering what's so specific about you know this this company's sidewalk plans as opposed to the other company's sidewalk plans. Um, thank you very much and, and I, I will try to answer that and, and I believe it's because of the track system. Um, one company has and the other doesn't. And I think that's the reason uh, uh, I think Scott, would, you can elaborate a little more if you like. I know you did. Uh, I think the mayor might have asked that question. I did. Yeah, I and, did. And uh, uh, I'm just vaguely remembering it was we, we discussed the track system. But if you wanted to finish that off, please do. Yes, Your Worship. So um, the two uh, the machinery, uh, the track work company. Um, so currently, the majority of our fleet is this type of uh, machinery, uh, so it's comparable, or we have a number of the same model currently. Um, so there's 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 a number of parameters that we score when we put uh, these tenders together, and, and some of the parameters are the way they're put together, uh, because we know uh, certain repairs from a shear bolt um, uh, repair to how we disconnect and, and reconnect um, the equipment to it. Uh, we look at ease and how that's done because time is money. If our crews take so long to have to repair them or diagnose a piece of machinery, that just has time, downtime, and it takes longer for the repair to be done or for a sidewalk to be cleared. Um, so we, we put a score, and that's why we use the point scoring system. If, you know, at the end of the day, if the holder machinery did have a high, higher uh, Price we would have recommended it, uh, but just based on the parameters we set, uh, we are recommending the track just because uh, the, the machinery is more, what our screws are more accustomed to, so easier to repair for the screws. We're already knowledgeable on it, uh, and it will save us downtime in the long run. So, in the RFP, did we specify that we want the track system included? that's all you seem to be talking about. I'm just wondering, if it wasn't in the RFP, I don't know why we're putting so much emphasis on it. And I guess that's my second question. I asked her in the capital budget, um, never got an answer. I'm just wondering how much money the city's saving by going out and buying our own track show, supposed to contract and that out. I know you don't have it here, but yeah. I'd like to get that answer. Yeah, I can uh, bring that back to the committee, uh, Councilor Kofi, and, and uh, think back to it. I, I will say there's, there's more than just money to it. I think there's a convenience factor uh, um, as we all know, we all get calls five minutes after the snowers. 
cells and they want to walk in it. So I think there's there's a, some component that we control when those sidewalks get done. And, when uh, and I think that's a big part of it as well. But certainly, we, it's good to know how much the money we get, the difference is, and uh, we'll do the comparison. Yeah. But did you want to, your other question? Was, was it in the tender? Yeah, I just want to answer. <laughs> Oh, yes, yeah. <laughs> it was in the tenders, the head of track system? Uh, Scott, can you explain that again to uh, our council, Cody? Uh, yes, Your Worship. So my apologies, I, I didn't, I didn't uh, catch that earlier. So there is no such, there is no track system. So all these machineries are four-wheeled, uh, rubber-tired machinery. Um, again, it, it comes down to the key features of each machinery. That's the track system brand. They have in onboard computers that can diagnose the machinery as soon as it breaks down. Um, so our, for instance, uh, you know, our, our, our uh, operator could be out in the field that breaks down. He calls, radios the uh, mechanic. They do a quick check through the computer system. The mechanic knows what part he needs off the shelf to grab and run it to the field to repair it. The, with the other machinery, um, there is no onboard diagnostic, so that machine would have to either be towed or travel back to the shop, be hooked up to the computer, um, diagnose it. So there's, there's a lot of parameters where it can add a lot of time over a long period of time, um, uh, over a few number of years. And then again, again we, this is track this is the brand that we have the majority of. Um, so ease of stocking of parts, um, our, the familiarity with our crews and our mechanics, um, less training, uh, there's just a number of benefits to continue with the same, uh, same manufacturer. And again, we did score them. Um, it, the scoring system was open uh, and included in the tendering process, uh, and we scored it based on that scoring system that we provided. Thank you very much. Okay, Councilor Cody. Councilor Kay. Uh, I'm Ian, not the scores, and I failed math in grade 10, grade 11, and grade 12, full disclosure. But 69.7 <laughs> plus 16, I get 75.7, which puts Saunders lower. So is there a discrepancy somewhere that I'm not seeing? So on your you, score? You, can you hear that, Scott? Yes, my apologies. I'm just trying to uh, just looking up. pull that up here. So your question again, Councilor McCabe, is that under the total score, it's 91.5 for Holder? Well, the total score, if you add up the scores, Saunders is not as high as Holder. It, it, that, so the price is 26 out of 30 to get it to 95.7. Yeah. No, I'm just clarifying it's in our minutes that it was 16. Yeah. So did you take calculus at university? No, okay. no. I got smart by that point. <laughs> <laughs> Question. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Okay, could you keep them up, please, so I can see them? Okay. Councillor Tweel, yay or nay? In favor. Councillor Yankov? In, in favor. All those against? Okay, eight to one. Your Worship, moved by Councilor McLeod, and by Councilor Duffy, that as for conditions of the request for the quota of supply, hot mix, asphalt, tack, and coal mix for the 2022 season, the submission of island construction limited for the following materials should be accepted. Asphalt B mix, $204.75 plus all public taxes per ton. Asphalt D mix, $222.95 plus public taxes per ton. Asphalt tack, uh, $1,750 uh, plus all public taxes per ton. Cash flow coal mix, $265 plus all public taxes per ton. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Question? Let's go. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Okay. Councilor Yankoff, yay or nay? In favor. Councilor Tweel? In favor. Okay. Sir, Your Worship, moved by yeah. Councillor Clouds and by Councillor Duffy that as for the conditions of request for quote on rainy mixed concrete and aggregate for 2022 season, the submission of Skirman concrete for the following material shall be accepted. 32 MPA concrete, $217 plus applicable taxes per yard, per, sorry, per, per yard, square, square. Um, square meter, sorry, uh, with regards to 35 MPA concrete, 
$221.80, all plus applicable taxes per square meter. Class A granular gravel, uh, $52.50, plus applicable taxes per ton. One and a half crust gravel, $43.50, plus applicable taxes per ton. Fiber mesh for concrete curbing, $11, plus all applicable taxes per uh, square yard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm sorry. You get lots more. Yeah. Uh, please. Okay, question? Question on it, sir? Just a, just a quick question. Go ahead. Um, can you give me an idea, uh, what, you're can you give me an idea what, what the percentage difference is this year to last year? Uh, yeah, I can do that, actually. Um, thank you very much for your question. So basically, the concrete is 7% more. Uh, 6% was for the Class A gravel. Um, but the one and a half crushed gravel actually was a minus, it was minus 12% last year. And down. Really? Yeah. And 10% uh, for the fiber mesh. Was that us two or more? And, uh, and you want to do the asphalt as well? Okay. Uh, and the, what's that, sorry? Was it less? 10%? More? No, more 10%. Okay, okay. for the fiber mesh. The the yeah. Yeah. And on the asphalt, the asphalt D uh, was 18% 18, 18 more. Uh, the asphalt D was 25%. Sorry, and, oh, the, oh, the asphalt was 18%? Yeah, 18% more, 25 for the D asphalt. Uh, the asphalt pack was 13% more, and the coal mix was 30% more. Yeah, so yeah, that's all based on crude prices too. Based on the prices yeah, of the that's, day. That's, that's the reason for the yeah. increase. But it's not because of the yeah. Is that too? Uh, yes, thank you. <coughs> Good question. Questions called? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Councilor Tweed, yay nay. In favor. Councilor Yanko, yay nay. In favor. Okay, let's hear what we're That's it. Uh, That's uh, my report. Thank you. Thank you, Conway. Economic Development, Tourism, <laughs> Event Management. Council Julie McCabe, Ward 9. Yes. The Economic Development, Tourism, and Event Management Committee met on March the 23rd. The Arts Advisory Board met on March 29th. The minutes are included in your package. Uh, the Future Economy recently highlighted an interview on their website with Anne's Rail, a distributed manufacturing company that makes rail components, and they've recently expanded to Charlottetown. Uh, I would encourage everyone to take a, a minute and maybe watch the interview, and our acting uh, economic development officer, Wayne, can provide a link if you don't already have it. Downtown Charlottetown, Inc. recently held their annual general, general meeting. Charlottetown Airport and the Greater Charlottetown Area Chamber of Commerce will hold their annual, annual meetings May 2nd and May 3rd, respectively. There are a few reports in your package shared at the last Economic Development Tourism Event Management Committee meeting with respect to invest in Canada's 2021 foreign direct investment inflows, as well as Immigration and Refugee Service Association of PEI's current needs in PEI newcomer communities. The score PEI awards were held on the 31st of March at the Fed Center. The city, through its Sports Tourism Initiative score, was the presenting partner and also the sponsor of the event of the award. We'd like to send congratulations out to all the nominees and winners. Two major event tourism and cultural announcements were recently made for Charlottetown. Van Gogh PEI, the immersive art experience, will take place from August the 5th to September the 5th at the Delta Prince Edward, as well as the PEI Convention Center. Festival Inspire, which is a multidisciplinary arts festival set against the backdrop of large-scale mural creations will take place July 18th to the 23rd. Wayne <coughs> also recently participated on the Canada Games Winter Celebration Best Practice mission throughout the province of Quebec with game staff. If there's any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. That's my report. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor McKay. Looks good. No questions. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Tweel. Can we move on to Environment Sustainable? That's Councillor Tweel. Councillor Tweel, Environment yes. Sustainability. Thank you. Uh, thank you. <coughs> Mr. Mayor, members of Council, the report is in your package. I'll do my best to answer any questions. Okay. Any questions for the Chair? 
such a good report, Councillor Cleel. No questions. <laughs> Thank you. Actually, I do have a question. Oh, you, question? Question from the floor. Oh, sorry, Councilor Tweel. <laughs> Councilor McLeod. Thank you, too. Thank you very much, Councilor Tweel, uh, on your report. Just, uh, I know I brought it up before uh, last month about crows. Uh, have you any headway on that? There seems to be, uh, I guess, crows are crows, but there seems to be much more feeding of the crows. And I'm wondering if the environment can make some recommendation to, uh, to police and bylaw officers to, uh, to crack down on that. Is that something you would entertain? Thank you. Councilor Tweel? Uh, no, uh, thank you, Councilor McLeod. It's going to be on our committee's uh, next agenda. Okay. And and, and uh, I'd like to extend an invitation if you'd like to attend our committee meeting as well. Okay. Uh, obviously, uh, a project of this magnitude requires a very comprehensive approach. It requires a partnership with Fish and Wildlife. Uh, I would even suggest the, you know, the Vet College um, you know, we did send out some communications to our residents as to some best practices, but uh, there's no doubt about it. The crows are uh, a growing problem here in our city, and it's affecting the, the health and well-being of some of our neighborhoods and communities. So uh, we're going to uh, be discussing this at our next committee's uh, meeting. And again, I'd like to extend the invitation to you or to any other member of council who would like to join us. Any other questions? Okay, thank you, Councillor Tweedle. I think the Vice Chair of Strategic Priorities and Intergovernmental Cooperation. Well, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, yes. Councillor Ramsey, leave you any notes? No, I didn't. But I'll, I'll just wing it here. Uh, the Strategic Priorities and Intergovernmental Cooperation Committee met on Thursday, March the 24th, and the draft minutes are included in your package. The Youth Engagement Advisory Committee met on March 10th, and the draft minutes are included in your package as well. Uh, we're taking a second reading to amend the election bylaw, and if anyone has any questions regarding that, uh, our minutes, I'll uh, be glad to answer them. Thank you. Any questions? No questions there. Councilor Crom, thank you. We're going to read second reading, sir. Yes, Your Worship. Thank you. Your Worship, to amend the City of Charlottetown election bylaw 2018-08 to reflect a recent revisions to the municipal election regulations whereby candidates and closely connected persons cannot be election officials, Your Worship. Moved by Councilor Ramsey. Sorry, uh, that would be Councilor Drawn. And second, who else is on the committee? Uh, Councilor Bird. Councilor Bird. So just we'll get these organized worship that change. And council we therefore be resolved that the city of Shelltown election bylaw be read a second time and that the said bylaw be now approved and adopted your worship. Okay. Shall I carry? Pass. Councilor Tweel, yay or nay? In favor. Councilor Yankov, yay or nay? In favor. Thank you. Okay, sir. That's it. Okay, sir. That's it. Yes, sure, sure. Stay here. Okay. My favorite committee. Find this finance audit and tender. Yeah, from here, Cody. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, in the report, you'll see uh, minutes from our last three meetings on the 10th, 21st, and 23rd, obviously dealing with the operational budget. I do want to thank council and staff again for, for working our way through that, that process. Um, there is one resolution here, Your Worship, for council to consider. And if there's any, any questions, I'll do my best to answer. Okay, can we just go over the minutes first? Any questions on the minutes from the meeting? Um, well, actually, two minutes. Oh, yeah, three minutes. March 10th, March 21st, March 23rd. They were all budget meetings, correct? So, good. So, do you want to go right to the resolution? Mr. Yes, Kelly, can you read the resolution, please? Yes, sir. Sure. Moved by Deputy Mayor Cody, a second by Councilor Bird. Whereas, based upon the backgrounder attached to Exhibit A of the oral report presented by staff in support of the Joint Sustainable Procurement Initiative 
and approved on March 29, 2022 by the Environment Sustainability Committee to be forwarded to Finance, Audit and Tenant Committee and then on to Council. Therefore, be resolved that one, Council approve the Joint Sustainability Procurement Initiative, JSPI, and support its implementation. Council two, number, sorry, number two, Council authorized the Mayor and CEO to execute all required documentation pertaining to the JSPI, including the agreement with the Town of Stratford in the form acceptable to the CEO. And three, Council support the overall city initiative to review and revamp the city's procurement system with emphasis on the development of procurement bylaw as required by Municipal Government Act of Prince Edward Island Any questions on that uh, policy? The backgrounder explains it very well, Mayor, Mr. Chair, Deputy Mayor Cody. Okay. So it's to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, gas emissions and waste, as well as ensure that dollars they spend promote fair labor standards, equitable economic development, community building. Huh. Pretty powerful. Good. Question? Call. Questions come. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Yes, for Dave, yay or nay? Yep. In favor. And Councillor Yanko, yay or nay? In favor. Thank you. Councillor Yankov, you want Thank you. to? Um, yes, yeah, so our committee did not meet uh, until till this morning, or I guess it would have been lunchtime. So there is no report for this month, but we will have an extra long report for next month. But if you do have any questions, I will do my best to answer. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Councillor Yankov. I know you must be waiting for the last report coming up. It's probably, yeah, top cop. Oh. <laughs> top cop uh, reverse no. being presented. Thank you, Your Worship. Chief's, Chief's the only fellow sitting in the room by himself and they're waiting. <laughs> can the Chief come in? If, the chief, if, if he's there, the Chief can come in. What? He's probably, probably sleeping. Oh, no, he shows up on the night. Well, Are you coming in, Chief? Deputy Fire is also online, Your Worship. Yes. Oh, good, good, Deputy uh, Deputy Mamie, thank you. Yeah, Tim's awake. Brad's in there taking a nap. Well, he's not eating anything, but because Tracy doesn't order us anything for regular <laughs> monthly meetings. <laughs> That's why. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Councilor. Yeah. 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 All right, we're getting we're getting late. Yeah. 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 All right, hey, you're Chief. How are you, Chief? Hey, Chief. Hi, Chief. Hi, Protected Sir. Emergency Services Committee met March 22nd, 2022. Minutes are in your package. No man, there's no resolution for consideration tonight. We're going to do a first reading to amend the City of Charlottetown taxi bylaw. <clears throat> Any questions? Um, I'll be happy to answer or I'll say defer to Tim or to, uh, to the Chief here. And um, so it's on your report first. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? Okay, do you want to read the resolution or the taxi? Oh, sorry. Can I ask a question? You sure can. Uh, Councilor Barry and Great. Thank you very much, Your Worship. Uh, now, just a question on, on some of the through the negotiations, uh, um, as, the, as the Chief would know, uh, with accessible taxis and how little ground we've been making uh, with them. Any, has there been any discussion through this process about trying to play ball with us? And, and uh, I mean, uh, you know, they're coming to us looking for things, and we're trying to get look for things back, and then we don't see them again. So I just thought, it, you know, it's it should be referenced at some point that that uh, you know we're for a municipality this size, we don't have one taxi that can handle uh, someone that's uh, that needs a ride. So I just thought it'd be a good chance to bring that up at there at, uh, at that level. So you know, thank you. You'll be working hard in that two pounds to the cloud. Yeah, and I know Cal the the police chief has been attending the meetings yes, too. Yes, great work on it. But. Do you want to, Chair, you do you want to let uh, Actually, yeah, absolutely yield to the Chief. Go ahead, Chief. Thank you, uh, Chair. Your Worship, uh, as you know, uh, we've been working on uh, accessible tax in front and on the working group. Um, and certainly, uh, yes, the, the progress has been, you know, not very progressive uh, for sure. 
uh, we've been struggling to find the reasons why and uh, collectively scanning other areas to try to determine why uh, there's a lack of buy-in in this area. Yeah. There's certainly a need, as, as we, we hear. Uh, um, but um, when we uh, look at the other needs of the taxi industry, I, I don't know if it'd be fair to barter one against the other. Um, it's an industry-driven service. Uh, but all, uh, you know, from, from what I said in this chief of police, I certainly, you know, every opportunity I get to engage the taxi owners to reinforce the need to service all citizens. Uh, and uh, we, uh, as, as policing, as the regulator of the, of the taxi service, um, you know, find every way to encourage them. And, uh, you know, I, I'm very fortunate to sit on the group and uh, we're, doing, we're trying to do good things and incentivize <coughs> that industry, but it's, it's been difficult. Yeah, go right ahead. Same Thank question. You Thank you very much, Chief, for your, for your answer uh, and uh, Councilor Burke. So um, I know you had done a, a scan of the Maritimes as far as what bylaws were in place for, for this uh, accessible taxi type of service. And um, was there, is there any of the communities and municipalities uh, bylaws? Uh, put a bylaw in place where they're made, that is mandatory to to be able to carry an assessment. I mean, it's it's to the point where you know, I mean, I think if there was one cab took a chance, they find that they're going to need two. But people just don't call because they know there is one. But um, there is a great need out there for it. And, and uh, at some point, maybe as a council, we should uh, we should be a little a little stiffer and, and uh, put a policy in place where they have to provide uh, this type of service. It's it's no different than a lot of services that the city provides. But, and uh, do you want to be a partner with us? Well, then we have to get on board. So I just thought, is there any municipalities that are doing that? So, Your Worship, uh, we have done a lot of scans. And actually, the last working group meeting, we brought that very uh, topic up. And uh, yeah. I haven't got the answer to that question yet. Uh, but uh, we will find that out and uh, we'll get back uh, uh, to council with that. Thank you. And, Chief, it's very much appreciative that you do attend these uh, committee okay. meetings with sure. Councillor McLeod and myself, and mm -hmm. and it's and that allows us to work within the taxi bylaw. And um, taxi service is very important for the city, especially to, uh, for tourism. And uh, you know, by keeping a good rapport <coughs> with the with the taxi services here in Charlottetown, much appreciated. Mm -hmm. So thanks. Okay. Want to read that, sir? Yes, Your Worship. Your Worship, City of Charlottetown Taxi Bylaw Amendment Bylaw Two Hundred Two One. Dash TX dash OA, sorry, O1A, to amend the City of Charlottetown Taxi Bylaw 2021 TX01 to increase the base fare within the City of Charlottetown, reflect changes in the dispatch system and address smoking in vehicles. Moved by Councillor Rivard, second by Councillor uh, Duffy, that the bylaw to amend the City of Charlottetown Taxi Bylaw be read the first time, Your Worship. Okay. Shall it carry? Pass. Pass. Councillor Tweed, yay or nay? In favor. Councillor Yanka, yay or nay? <coughs> okay. So your Worship, moved by Councillor Barrett, and by Councillor Duffy, <coughs> that the bylaw be now approved as a City of Charlottetown um, bylaw, and that it be entitled the City of Charlottetown Taxi Bylaw, and that it be read a second time at the next public meeting of Council, Your Worship. Shall it pass? Pass. Councillor Tweel? Pass. Councillor Yanka? <coughs> okay. Just under new business, is that the last? Councillor? Yeah, that's left. Under new business, what Councillor McKay brought up about the CAC and the procedural bylaw, can we leave that for a future meeting? Is that all right? Absolutely. Okay, yeah. we can't do it. No, 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 I know that. But yeah, yeah just I just want to make sure that it's on record that we need to Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be another long agenda, is it? You, you said you wanted that on 25th. Okay. Your Worship, what's the what's the process though? Does does this come to the committee the whole for discussion? Yes, okay, it will. So it doesn't go through the committee. Back no, it, back it, it's 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 a committee issue because CAC was appointed by council and by a recommendation mm -hmm. from council. So that's going to it's the bylaw, the procedure of the bylaw. Yes, sir. Council. Yes. Okay. Um, motion to adjourn, but just before we do, wishing all of you a happy, happy Easter, joyous talk. And uh, that's for the residents, the staff, council. Thank you very much. All in favor? Good. <laughs>